Hello, this is Real Foot Forward, a West Tennessee podcast. This week's episode is made possible by our friends at Final Flight Outfitters, the family-owned outdoor store that has all the apparel and outdoor equipment you need for your next hunting or fishing trip. Visit finalflight.net for more information. Today's guest is Ashana Jarrett, Executive Director of the Brownsville Haywood County Arts Council. This is Scott Williams, the host of Real Foot Forward, where every single week we talk about the history, the people, and the culture of our home right here in West Tennessee. This week, we're going to talk about a place that is near and dear to my heart, Brownsville, Tennessee, with a new friend that I've made, Ashana Jarrett, who is working hard at making Brownsville, Tennessee an even better place than it already is, which is incredible. Welcome, Ashana. Well, thank you, Scott. Thanks for having me today. So so your title is Executive Director of the Brownsville Haywood County Arts Council, correct? Yes, and I'm also the Cultural Arts Supervisor for Haywood County. So we're going to have a lot to talk about. We're going to uh, talk about what all that means and what the arts are like for rural communities. Uh, but first of all, I want to back up. I want to get to know you a little bit better. Uh, tell me a little bit about where you came from and what your uh, childhood was like. Well, Scott, I'm a native of Brownsville, so this is home to me. Um, I grew up here in this area, in this community, singing, uh, part of the community plays. I went to high school here, left high school. I graduated from Memphis State University, uh, University of Memphis. Uh, So I've had a, a good run at it and just happened to stumble upon a wonderful position after being with State Farm Insurance for more than 16 years, uh, this position, this cultural arts position became available in 2014. And I received a phone call and said, hey, we've got something that we think fits you very well. So I jumped on board, interviewed, <laughs> sent the resume, and here I am six years later. And so, so you started off even um, as a child, uh, you were singing. Did you play the, an instrument? I do. I play the piano. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And you were singing, I'm assuming, in church and at school? In church, at school here at the, uh, at that time, it was the College Hill Theater, now the Ann Marks Performing Arts Center. Yes. Now, did they, did they have uh, resources for you as a young girl? Were there the th- teachers and classes and was, was that kind of thing available for you then? Let me tell you what my greatest resource was, my mother. My mother is a retired educator. She taught for over 40 years. And again, her family is so musically inclined. So if there was any resource that was available to me, it was what I received in my home and with the love of my family. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, you know, I'm a, I'm really into genealogy, especially Haywood County genealogy. You, were your grandparents from Haywood County? And how yeah. far back does your family go? Yes. Oh, my family has been here for generations. Uh, And there are all generations of maybe like four or five generations of educators in the school system, uh, even through segregation. And then my mom became one of the first African-American teachers to integrate Haywood County schools. And believe it or not, Scott, the place where my office is right now is where she taught her business class here at Haywood County High School. Wow, that's incredible. Um, So you're, um, you're, do you, are you into genealogy and ancestry at all? Not as much as probably you are, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have to, I'll go back and look, um, look at our ancestry. What, what uh, part of Haywood County and Brownsville did your people come from? West Haywood County, out uh, Highway 19 West, the Ripley Highway is what we would call it, and the Woodlawn community. Sure, so yeah. You would be looking for the Brack family and the Jarrett family. Okay, I'll check it out and let you know what I find out. All right, I'll keep the light on waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you so you got this new job about six years ago where uh, you were going to tra- transform um, your career from insurance to the arts. Um, how big of a leap was that for you? Well, let me say this, you know, after being employed uh, for 16 years, of course, there's somewhat of uh, a relaxed feeling, maybe just complacent. And then to be approached with something that's completely different uh, to come and work with community and a closer community such as Brownsville. I was in Jackson at State Farm. And so 
I got to know people all across West Tennessee, but to come home and get to know the intricate fabric of the community in which I resided and grew up in, that's a whole nother ball game, Scott, a whole nother ball game. Uh, so it has been very rewarding because it's allowed me to somewhat work in a passion. As I mentioned, music has always been a part of my life. Theater has always been a part of my life. So to be able to come back and help cultivate that within this community. I mean, it's second to none, second to none. It's a win-win. <laughs> so Ashana, you landed in uh, this new job uh, where you're going to promote the arts. So first, I'm assuming that you needed to find out what was the status of the arts in Brownsville, Tennessee, when you first started. What, uh, what, so Ashana, you landed in uh, this new job uh, where you're going to promote the arts. So first, I'm assuming that you needed to find out what was the status of the arts in Brownsville, Tennessee, when you first started. What, uh, what opportunities were there for people to enjoy the arts? What, what did you find? Well, the Brownsville Haywood County Arts Council has been in existence for almost 40 years. Um, uh, what we decided to come in and do was to make a concerted effort to diversify our programming so that we could reach the four corners of the community. And that has been uh, a great success of ours over the past six years that I've been on board. We've been able to identify and promote individuals right here in the community from all over the community. Uh, so that, that, that's been a win-win for us. If you think about a song uh, that can express an emotion or tell a story or either a painting that describes any uh, simplistic idea or anything, uh, it can influence social change. So I feel like the Brownsville Arts Council is a part of the movement for social change and appreciation for the arts. Um, I'm also curious, tell me a little bit about what is available. If I were exploring moving to Brownsville, Tennessee, and I'm a person who appreciates the art for my fa the arts for my family, what y'all got going on there in Brownsville? Well, Scott, listen, we boast of being the art and soul of this great place we call Brownsville. To be honest, we have been challenged most recently with COVID-19, uh, with continuing our mission to cultivate the arts in the community. However, we are fortunate to be afforded the opportunity to present two upcoming musical events at the Brownsville Amphitheater. We will present Autumn Nights, which features a local band here, The Waiting. So we're excited about that. We are also excited to present the Jackson Symphony in their Symphony on the Move concert at 7 p.m. again here at the Brownsville Amphitheater. And it's courtesy of Friends of the Arts Council here in our community. So that particular performance will feature a brass quintet and it promises to be a wonderful evening under the stars right off of our Fort Square. So Jackson's probably Jackson and Memphis, considering that Brownsville is located kind of in the middle of Jackson and Memphis, you probably have a lot to draw from, uh, from both those two areas. That's right. That's right. People from all over West Tennessee uh, come and they're guests of our arts, cultural arts program. Let's talk a little bit about um, the Haywood County Museum that I know is there. Um, I had the privilege of being able to get a tour from Lynn Shaw um, before he passed away. And I know that he was a big uh, advocate of the museum. Uh, what is the status now? Well, uh, we now have a new curator. It's Dr. Robert Brooks, and he is working expeditiously uh, to get things moving again by way of the Haywood County Museum. You will see new displays that are uh, here. And he's just, he's doing a wonderful job to try to get us as we move into reopening. Now, is it, is it, so it is not open right now. If I wanted to come check it out, can you make an appointment? Used to, you yeah. have to make an appointment. That's right. Right. You make an appointment or you call. Uh, we have signage on our doors that say, if you'd like to come in for a tour, just give us a call. We have a person that's on the campus here at College Hill 
uh, Monday through Friday, and she's here nine to four. So there's always someone here that can allow you to, to come in. Uh, do you want to share a little bit about what people would find inside there? Sure. Well, the history of the building itself uh, is a story to me. Um, this was the Brownsville Baptist Female College and it opened September of 1851. And then the county bought this particular building and it became and was opened as the high school in 1911. So as you go around or have a chance to, to tour the building, you will see composites of the graduating classes dating way back 1918. You will see class composites. And once you enter into the museum, you will see how uh, the history of Haywood County is chronicled in 25 year increments. There's also a sports room, a lot of uh, memorabilia that's military related. Uh, it just tells the story of Haywood County and those that contributed to the history. My parents are on those um, high school um, yeah. things that are hanging up. So that's really cool. Um, and I love uh, like the, uh, I, I can't remember all the names of the communities, but there's a little post office in there. Yeah. I think the Jones. The uh, Jones post office, yeah. Right. And then there's a Wilmot storefront. You know, if you're looking, there's a, the area Wilmot. There's mm -hmm. a storefront there as well. Yeah, and there's a uh, gas pump, old gas pumps. It's just a really, uh, just a lot of things that tell the story of a small rural community and how it developed. Uh, it's really, it's really a fascinating for anybody who who comes to the area. They should definitely check it out. Uh, the sports, the sports room. You know, Haywood County and Brownsville was really big in um, all the sports, and that didn't just start. That's been going on for a long time, which which is evident by the exhibit. That's right. That's right. There's even a scoreboard from 1979 that's there. Uh, you will see room uh, in that room where there's space for uh, a Tony Delp, who is an NBA star right out of Haywood County. Uh, there's uh, there's all kinds of stuff there. Sports, military. And, it, and again, as I said, it just chronicles the history of Haywood County. And then you, you mentioned the uh, Ann L. March Performing Arts Center. What is that? Well, you know, it's a jewel for our community to be, especially us, the community this size, to have a performing arts center with a capacity of 420 seats. Um, it's where our children every other year perform their, their musicals, our community's musicals. We've done Rock and Tell of Snow White. We've done Shrek Junior. We have done. Uh, the Lion King <laughs> here. Mm -hmm. Our high school also uh, uses our MPAC for their theatrical performances, their concerts. Uh, we've done live on the lawn concerts. In case of inclement weather, we take the concerts off the lawn and go right into the theater. So uh, to be able to have a, a theater of its size, uh, we're just fortunate here in our community. We're thankful to the Marx family for loving uh, the cultural arts initiatives here in our community. So what do you suppose, what would happen if it all went away, if there were no more arts in Brownsville? What, what impact do you think would be felt if it were all gone tomorrow? Oh my goodness, the economic impact, uh, just the dreariness of not having cultural arts. You know, again, arts just help us with human conditioning and telling the story and expressing. Uh, so it would be a sad place, Scott, <laughs> without uh, the AMPAC Theater. We rely upon it so heavily. We, not only the Arts Council, but other individuals who do, uh, they produce plays, they come up, they use the theater. You know, whether it's gospel singing, the Barnett family, you know, will come up and they will do their annual concert. So it's just, you know, again, a jewel to have in our community and located right here in the historic district. Now, I also want to talk a little bit about um, your uh, show that you, your online digital show that you do with our mutual friend, Sonia. Um, how did that come about? And what is it? Tell us a little bit about that whole thing. 
Brownsville as is was just, it just was birthed out of, she and I were just kind of talking. We collaborate on several different things and we were just talking about keeping uh, the connectivity going within our community, especially with COVID-19. And, and we wanted to remain connected with the community. So we were just talking and she said, you know, I, I said, we'll just do it, whatever, you know, as it is. And she said, it's Brownsville as is. That's what it is. A for Shauna, S for Sonia. It's Brownsville as is. And it's actually a format that we've been able to use to bring out the very best in our community, in this region, you know, and even around surrounding areas. We've gone to Mercer, Tennessee. We're looking forward to coming to the Discovery Park there in Union City. Uh, we've gone over to the Bryant Distillery just across uh, in, in uh, Madison County. So, you know, we're just excited about where we've been able to go to help people stay connected and to even make them aware that there's so many things here that people in Brownsville need to know about. Yeah. I mean, you just mentioned the Bryant distillery. I wrote that down because I didn't even know about that. And that is uh, near Haywood County. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Right off of exit. I think it's exit 74, 70, the lower Brownsville road exit. Uh, if you're traveling eastbound on I-40 towards Jackson. Um, have you guys been over yet and done any of your show over there uh, where they have the new visitor center that has the uh, solar powered exhibit? It's on our list. It is on our list. We had to get uh, some things. Uh, we tried to go over and so they had to get permission, I guess I could say. And so we're waiting to get all of that cleared from the state. I just, I just want to see you two go in there and just do it anyway. Not ask for permission, just barrel in. We wanted to, Scott, let me tell you, Scott, we said we, we really, you know, it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we wanted to just go, just go, but we thought we'd better do it, you know, I guess the right way. But well, anyway, we're waiting to get our clearance. I don't have to get clearance to talk about them now. It's really, um, if anybody is going uh, down I-40, um, I don't know what exit it is, but it's, is it the exit after? It's 42? It's right before you get to exit 42, so probably 44, I would imagine. And it's a rest area, but it mm -hmm. also has solar power panels and additionally has a really well done exhibit uh, inside on uh, solar solar power, I felt. Is it from the TVA? Is that where it came from? Yeah, I'm assuming so, yes. Okay, well, we'll tweet at them and say they got to let y'all get in there and do a good good episode. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate that. But um, listen, we're, we've gone to the city of Stanton. Uh, we've done O'Neill Lake, which is out at the Wildlife Refuge. There is a small farm that's in West Haywood County right off of Highway 19 going towards Nutbush City Limits. Uh, it's called Abiding Farm. Uh, there, she's just got just a few acres of produce. I mean, it's just, it's just been a wonderful journey, this entire Brownsville as is. Well, I'm taking notes of stuff that I need to go check out. Um, what, of, of all the places you've been, this is, um, you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but of all the places you've been, what is your favorite um, what is your favorite story that came out so far from Brownsville as is? Uh, let's see. Our, fa You know, I really loved O'Neill Lake. It was the first one. And we were so proud. Um, just sharing the wildlife refuge and their programming that's available for our community's children. That meant a lot to me because so many children don't even know that O'Neill Lake or the refuge even exists. So it was a wonderful way for us to promote for the wildlife refuge. I really think that was my favorite so yeah, far. It's beautiful, it's beautiful out there. Um, and I love the uh, gravel roads you can drive. I mean, you can get right up on the river bottom. And experience wildlife, you know, firsthandedly. There's, there's no telling what you would see out there. It's kind of like you all's version of Real Foot Lake. Um, <laughs> That's right. A lot That's of the right. same birds probably stop off in both places. That's right, Scott. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, so Word of Life has, has been good for us. It has been good, and it's been good for our community. Now, we can't uh, not talk about one of the crown jewels in Brownsville, which, of course, is the West Tennessee Delta Heritage Center, um, and also Tina Turner. I know, um, and Sleepy John Estes. So what, do those, uh, all of those exciting things going on that the West Tennessee Delta Heritage Center is doing, um, does that help uh, the arts community? Oh, absolutely. That's why you'll see Sonia and me and so many collaborative efforts, because we understand uh, and agree with trying to cultivate the arts, trying to encourage participation and the appreciation of the arts. Um, we're coming up on Tina Turner Heritage Days, and she and I were talking at, out of her office one day, and she said, I don't know what we're going to do. I said, yeah, we're, we're going to do something. So we decided to just do it virtually. So we're, we're excited about that coming up at the end of this month. Now, for any listeners who don't really know the connection between Brownsville and Tina Turner, do you want to uh, talk a little bit about that? Well, Tina grew up uh, in a community that's in West Haywood County, Nutbush. She attended school here in Brownsville at Carver High School. Uh, so for her to uh, have matriculated here at schools, and it's just meant a lot to some of us here in the community. Uh, Tina's just, she's simply the best. She says it herself, she's just simply the best. And for us to be afforded the opportunity to have her, her childhood school, Flag Grove School there, on display out at the Delta Heritage Center for people all across the world. I mean, they get people from every way. I mean, all across the world, just not the United States. There are people here from Germany, Ireland, Canada, Mexico. She's got people that are coming in from everywhere to see and to visit um, the Tina Turner Museum. So she has meant a lot to the economic impact here, the Tina Turner Heritage Days. Uh, festival that's coming on uh, usually brings in people from everywhere. So this year we just decided to do it virtually and we've got some wonderful things uh, in store for uh, not only this community, but people all across the world. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's a state of the art exhibit for sure. Um, and then the heritage days, of course, I see the posts and, you know, can really appreciate, um, everything that is happening, uh, there with that. And um, hopefully it'll be just as big and exciting, um, under these COVID situation as it was normally. Um, there are other, um, exhibits there as well that also speak to Brownsville's, uh, impact on music with Sleepy John Estes. Yeah, uh, the, the home house of Sleepy John Estes is there on display as well. There's just a feeling that you get when you walk into the Delta Heritage Center uh, to see how it just, I guess, brings together the musical heritage. There's a lot of musical heritage here in Haywood County, and it tells the story. That, that, that center tells the story of the musical legacy from so many artists, including Tina, uh, Yank, and, and Bootsy Whitelaw, and Reverend Clay Evans. Th their stories are shared right there at the Delta Heritage Center. Um, what's next? Now, obviously, um, the arts has been impacted by COVID-19, and music and um entertainment and history and museums are, are challenging to experience when you're six feet apart and wearing masks and trying to follow the guidelines so that everybody stays healthy. What are your thoughts when this is all over with and we're around the corner? Uh, what, where do, what do you think is going to happen with the arts in Brownsville, Tennessee? Well, I just think we will continue our mission. I think uh, we may have to look at doing things just a tad bit differently uh, to secure the, the health of our community. But we will continue moving on. Uh, his truth is marching on, so we will continue. <laughs> we will continue doing what we're doing. Uh, we will we will keep 
identifying and promoting uh, individuals that are talented from our community. We will continue to bring programming that is uh, wholesome for the entire family. Uh, we've had to be a little bit more creative with some of the things that we have done as far as the Arts Council is concerned. You know, you're, a lot of our programming now has taken place outdoors. And it's, you know, it's worked because that's what we've had to do. That's what we've had to do. But for months to come, uh, we will have to take a look at, again, like I said, the health of our community. We definitely want to see our numbers uh, flatten. Haywood County has been a red spot. So uh, we're in hopes that people know that uh, we are the art and soul of, of Haywood County. And we plan to continue uh, with stage performances, visual art shows, uh, theater. We plan to continue to do that. Well, thank you, Ashana. I really appreciate the work that you're doing, and I applaud it heartily. And I thank you for being with us today on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Scott. Take care and be safe. Thank you for listening to Real Foot Forward. Be sure to like, subscribe, and leave us a review. Start planning your visit to Discovery Park of America by visiting discoveryparkofamerica.com. And also be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for the latest updates.